speak to each one here today, every heart. Let every heart be spoken to today. God, let them receive the engrafted word of God. Father, let it fall in soil that has been broken up. And God, it can be planted deep within the soil of their heart. And I pray that this week, by the, by the watering of the Holy Spirit, that God, you cause this seed to grow. I pray, Father, not just for ears to hear, but God, I pray for feet to respond. And Lord, I pray your deepest and richest blessings, just as we just heard Brother Bob share. Pray that on each one here today, Father God, that they would hear your word and that be a reward for responding to your word. Your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to talk to you today about the secret place. The secret place. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. Jesus is speaking. He says, but when you pray, you notice he doesn't say, but if you pray. He says, but when you pray, the assumption is that every, every child of God ought to have a prayer life. Now it's sad to say that's not the case. And it is true that God will allow you to rest on any level of your faith that you want to rest on. If you only want to get, if you only want to go a little ways with Jesus, He'll let you go a little ways. We'll say, Brother Tom. Um, I would need some scripture to back that up. Well, okay. The word exodus in the Bible literally means exit. Exodus is, was the exit of the Hebrews from Egypt, a land of slavery, 430 years in slavery. And God said, when they cried out, we have no prior knowledge of them crying out until God goes to Moses in the wilderness of Moab because Moses had fled because he killed a man. And he goes to Moses and he said, Your people have cried out and I have heard them. And I'm sending you to get them. And he tells the people, tells the people I, heard, I heard your cry. You see, they were so used to the life that they were in of slavery, of being a servant, of being, of being underneath, being the tail and not the head. They were so used to being that, they didn't even cry out to God, but they finally got desperate because the Egyptians were turning up the heat on them, and they finally cried out to God. It's as if God was saying, I've just been waiting for you to cry out. And he sends Moses. And we have the book of Exodus, which is the book of Exodus, which means this. That ought to mean something to you and I. If you're under something right now that is, that is draining you and grinding on you, our God is a God of Exodus. <clears throat> there is no temptation overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And know this, that when you are tempted, God will always provide an exit. He is a God of exodus. You say, God, I want to get off this path I'm on. Then take the exit. You can have an exodus. But when the Hebrews came out of Egypt and they were in the wilderness, they settled for something. Because God had told them all along, I've got a place for you. A wonderful place. He described it like this, a land flowing with milk and honey. Their forefather Abraham had journeyed to that land. He had seen it. It had been promised to him. It was inhabited by others now. But he told them, you're going to have houses that you didn't labor for. They're already built for you. There are fields already planted for you. It's a bit like Bob's testimony. Someone says, I'm going to give you 15 acres. The house is already built. Just move in. Amen. But when they got there, and they sent 12 spies in, and 10 of those spies didn't have the perspective or the heart of faith that two of those 
Ghost fire is there. So two went in. Saw the same thing that the other ten saw. But when they came back out of Canaan's land, having spied it out, they came out with this testimony. The people there are like giants, and we are like grasshoppers. That's perspective. In other words, they are too strong for us. We are little in their sight. Why? They didn't have a proper perspective of who their God is. Amen? Because Joshua and Caleb were two of those 12 spies. They came out and said, yeah, they're big and they're strong, but we can take them. We can take them. And it's all about perspective. And where you gain perspective, where you get a plan, where you find out who you are, where you find out the kind of power that God has placed in you and the kind of purpose he has for you and the kind of destiny that he has designed you for is you discover that in the secret place. When you pray, when you pray, go into your room, Matthew 6, 6, and when you have shut your door, Pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. When you pray, go to the secret place where your Father is. Matthew 6, 18, just a little later, Jesus says, So that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. He's saying, don't make, don't let everyone know you're fasting. Don't make it look like you're fasting. Don't, don't announce it. Fast in secret. Your Father who's in the secret place will see you. When you meet Him in the secret place, He will tell you things you wouldn't otherwise know. It's called revelation. When you go to the secret place, don't do it to be seen by men. Don't fast to be seen by men. Don't pray to be heard by men. But go to your father. Where is he? Come on, church. He's in the secret place. The Hebrew word for secret place is translated many different words. One of the words is translated as shelter. Another place, the same word is translated hiding place. He is our hiding place. He is our shelter. He is our tower of refuge. He's the shelter into which we run. He's the hiding place in which we hide. Isaiah said, you know, Isaiah 45, 3, I will give you the treasures of darkness or hidden treasures and hidden riches of secret places. You see, there are only, there are only things that you can get from God. There's only treasures from God. There, there, there are certain treasures, certain words, certain revelations that you get when you set time aside and you find a secret place and you hide away with just you and Father. Just you and Father. Now, God can speak to you this morning. He can deposit a treasure. But I'm here to tell you there are things, there are some things you only get from God in the secret place. In the time that you set aside and you sit with him in the secret place. Secret number one, find a place. Find a place to meet God every morning. Jesus said go in and to your closet or go into your room and shut the door. My wife, for many years, had a had a prayer closet in her house. She took this word literally, and she would go in her closet and shut the door. But there were times I would come home, and her car was there, and I couldn't find her. And I remember, oh, she's in the secret place. I would go to the bedroom in which that closet was, which was not our bedroom, it was the spare bedroom, and I could hear her beseeching heaven. For, for many of you and for this church and for me and for her children. We didn't have grandchildren those days. 
I could hear her in the closet. Now, she didn't have to literally build a closet, but what she did do is she found a place to set out the, set out, uh, shut out the distractions of this life and the noise of this world. For you, it might be on your patio with a cup of coffee. It might be in a hot tub with a cup of coffee. It might be on your deck. It might be on your chair early in the morning. The Bible tells us that Jesus would rise early. He would go to pray. And I believe that that was his secret place. I believe that he went, rose early to go pray and meet his father in the secret place. That that's what he found out what he was supposed to do that day. He said, I can only say what I hear my father saying. I can only do what I see my father doing. But see, we've got so used to saying things that we already know and doing things that we've already done that sometimes we forget that God's not even in that anymore. We keep running with the instructions and God says, but let it wait you to lift before I gave you the rest of the instructions. How often do we get instruction number one and run off and do it? Only to find, oh, wait a minute, there's got to be another part to this. Then we go back to the box, get the instructions down, and we go, oh, there's four parts to this. You ever done that? Oh, I could do this. Look at a picture and just start doing it. In the secret place, we get instructions. So he says, go into your room. So secret number one for you, because I want to give you some secrets today that will change your life. How many want your life to change? Because so you can come here Sunday after Sunday and have nothing change. You can come here every Sunday and have nothing change in your life. Because God will allow you to stay at the level you want to stay. Back to the story that I left off. So many of those Hebrews, they got an exit for God. They had a leader to lead them there. But because they believed ten spies, they chose to stay in the desert. There were even two tribes of the 12 tribes that when they got to the promised land and decided to cross the Jordan and take it, there were two that said, we like it on this side of the Jordan. So two tribes settled on the wrong side of the Jordan. And God was still with them, just not the same way with the other 10. They settled for something less. How often in our life do we settle for mediocrity? How often do we settle for a level that we just say, well, you know, I got to this level and I'm comfortable here. I'll just stay here. I mean, things are good. We all find ourselves in those places at times. And God says, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why don't you come back to the secret place with me? I've got a table lamp, a higher ground that I want to take you to graze in. I know there's grass here, but I've got some better grass if you want to graze higher. Are you here this morning? But you've got to go to the secret place. Hear what the Father says. So find a place. Find, make time. The place and the time is important. Find a place, find a time to get along with God. Take your Bible there with you. Open it up somewhere. Don't just open it up anywhere. Have a plan. Lord, I'm going to go through the Psalms. I love to use the Psalms in my devotions. I love to use the Psalms because they are so personal. And the Psalms bear the soul of those that wrote them, mostly written by King David. And they don't hide anything. I mean, there's times in there he says, God, where are you? My enemies are all around me, and I don't seem to think you're with me right now. And then later in the song, he encourages himself. He says, okay, they surrounded me. I cried out to you, and you answered me. But David is so real in those songs, and we can identify with him. But find some place. Get in there. I'll take your word with you. And find the time to be alone. God. Just you and God. See, it's okay to have somebody preaching. It's okay to have, 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 a, have a book that you want to read that will feed you. I'm not against any of those things, but you cannot substitute your own personal relationship and your own personal time with God. That's not the voice of somebody else. It's just your voice and the Father's voice. Nothing more exciting than hearing the voice of your father. That is exciting. Now I wish I could tell you that every time I go to the secret place that I come out every time going, whoo, man, 
command did Father speak to me in a mighty way today? It's not like that. It doesn't always happen that way. There are times it just seems like we just sat there and looked at each other. You know, there was a time of my, there was a time of your spouse, just like with my spouse, when you first met them, and they were just the most beautiful or most handsome person you'd ever met, that you didn't have to have words, you could just stood, you could just sit and look at each other. And just the look you gave each other said it all. The body language said it all. There are some times that I come out and I say, God, I, I didn't hear you speak. But we were, we were together today. We spent time together. Then he says, secret number two. So find the place, secret number two, shut the door. You have to shut out the noise of this world if you're going to go to the secret place with God. Because the distractions of your life, the distractions of my life, will come against the time that I want to spend with the Father to hear what he wants to say. That's what he wants to impart to me. He's the teacher, not me. I don't go to the secret place to teach him. I go there to be taught. What can you or I teach Father? You can't teach God anything. Sometimes we act like we're, we act like we're, uh, we're training him. Well, you know, Father, did, did you know that so-and-so? Well, you think God just went... Sorry, I didn't know it. Glad you told me. Right? We don't go there to instruct Father. We go there to receive instructions. Shut the door. Focus on Him. When you do that, listen, I promise you, you will have to take every thought captive. If you're slightly ADD like me, you'll get about two minutes in and all of a sudden your mind will go, Oh, I saw that text this morning. I need to call that person. You know what? The phone call for that person will be a whole lot better if I'll just go ahead and stay in the secret place and make that call 30 minutes from now. Are you hearing me? God will say, oh, gosh, I, uh, I got laundry to do. Well, the laundry can wait. Come on, you hear what I'm saying? Uh, the saints will start sending fiery darts of things to do, things you ought to be doing right now. There'll be the Marthas of your life that will say, you ought to be doing something right now. And you're going to be like Mary. The place I need to be right now is at the feet of Jesus. Right. It's the needful place. Because you'll get more done in the doing if you'll first do the sitting at the feet of the Father. Right. He will make your time in the doing more fruitful. You won't have to undo as much stuff that you wish you'd have never done. If we hear the Father's instructions. So you're going to find a place that's going in your room. Shut the door, he says in, in Matthew 6, 6. Focus on him. Take every thought, Captain. Don't think about your job. Don't think about your finances. Don't think about that sore that's on your arm. Don't think about the sick person that needs prayer. The poor you will have with you always. There's going to be a time to pray for that. I'm not saying we don't pray. But listen, when you go up there, take every thought captive. Say, Father, what's on your mind today? See, there's different kinds of prayer. And I certainly want you to pray for the sick. And I certainly want you to pray for the lost. And I certainly want to pray for you to pray about your own circumstances. That's not what I'm talking about this morning. I'm talking about having a listening ear where you go and sit in the presence of Father and say, Father, what do you want to say to me today? What are your instructions for this day? That's secret number three. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen, listen. Did you know that listening is a matter of our will? Listening is a matter of your personal will. The psalmist said in Psalm 95, 7, Today, if you will hear his voice, if you will hear his voice. See, we can, we can it's, it's a matter of our will. Do you want to hear the voice of the Father? Do you want to hear the Lord's voice? He said we can know his voice. He said, my sheep know my voice. We can know his voice. But will we hear his voice? In other words, will, will we listen and hear the voice of the Father? I found the scripture that was very interesting. 
Because I, I, we find ourselves at times doing all the talking to a God who already knows everything. Have you ever had somebody come to tell you a story? You already know the story. They don't realize somebody else has already told you, but you can't get a breath in and you don't feel like interrupting them to say, I know I heard that. So you let them go through a 15 minute spill and then when they're done, you got to drop that bomb. Yeah, I heard that yesterday. Sometimes I think we go to the Father with things you already know who won't even shut up. We just start rattling off. We don't even stop to say, but hear what he wants to say about the situation. We do all the talking. So listen, listen to what Zechariah said. This was God Almighty speaking through the prophet Zechariah. In Zechariah 7, chapter 7, and verse 13. He said, when I called, talking about God, God is speaking here. When I called, they did not listen. Everybody goes, okay, I know that. I know people don't listen. But catch this next part. So when they called, I would not listen. Did you hear that? When I called, they would not listen. So now when they call, I will not listen. Wow. Is it possible that all we do is we just keep telling God everything Tell him what he needs to do and never stop to listen to what he wants to do. You moms that are here, you dads that are here, when we've had children that have gone wayward, when, we, when they're not doing what we know that they were taught to do, they're not following the ways of the Lord that they grew up in. I mean, it's like we think we've got to do something. We've got to do something. If I just get a hold of them, if I can just, listen, I can tell you something that as a young man, who was raised in a Christian home with two of the best parents I could ever ask for. When I turned 17, I walked away from God. I walked away. And I did my own thing. And my mother, my mother who was praying for me, my father who was praying for me, but my mother took it another step. My mother would call me every Sunday morning. Every Sunday morning. Son, you going to go to church today? No, Mom, I'm not going to church today. I'm a grown man. I'm sleeping in. Love you. Next Sunday. Son, you going to go to church today? No, Mom. I'm not going to church today. I worked all night. Mom, I got in at 7 o'clock this morning. Let me sleep. This went on and on. She started sending visit the visiting team from our church. But I figured out what night they were coming. I knew visitation night. So I went after the door. I'm just telling you the truth. I mean, Mom did everything behind the scenes. Thank God she was praying for me. But then she was trying to make the prayers happen herself. Doing everything she can do. One day, my little mom, who's in heaven, she died in 1991. She was only 67 years old. I got angry one morning when she called me on a Sunday and I said, Do not call me again. If I want to go to church, I'll go to church. Mom, do you get it? Boy, I regret those words. I love her to call me. Say, yeah. son, you going to church? Well, I can say, Mom, I'm never miss. I'm there every Sunday. Those of you that have children so often, we're trying to make it happen. We're trying to make it happen. Get in the secret place. God, you know where my son is. You know where my daughter is. And I trust you. You trusted them with me. I trust them with you. You're the one who gave them to me. And I trust you with them. Can't make it happen. If we just got the instruction of the Lord, if we just, if we just listen, listen, listen to the Lord. Secret number four. Obey, obey, obey. In other words, respond. If God's going to tell us something when we have closed our doors, He says in Matthew 6 6, it was me. I'll reward you in open places. I'll reward you in open places. In another place, He says, When I tell you in darkness, 
you speak in the light. No, when I tell you a secret, you speak it openly. Obey, obey, obey. Respond, respond, respond. Psalms 91 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You see, when you're, those of us that in this listening and this responding, because there's not a parent or grandparent in this room that doesn't want safety for your children. You want protection. You want provision. Most of the time, what we do is we overfear. Most of the time we want, our, we, want our, we want God's protection around our children. But the way we try to make that happen is by, by, by making them over anxious about things. Oh, did you know there's a clown out there? Beware of the clowns. Clowns are everywhere. Oh, look out. There was a man. Have houses being broken into Waco. Lock your doors. My wife and I are different about locking things. And I know, you ladies, I know you're much more about security than we men are. But she's locked the keys in our car about five different times. And it's cost me money. Because I get out with the keys in the door because I'm just going right there. The, the door don't need to be locked. And she gets out and locks the door. I turn around. Did you just lock that door? Yeah. I don't have the keys. Oh, I mean, so she did it again at Michael and Amanda's. We're in the middle of nowhere. Whit Harrell is in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's, it's, there is no thief going to try to find Whit Harrell. It's not on the map. We're at the ball game with our car parked right in front of the fence so she could sit in the car and watch the game because a cold front came in. I get out, leave the car unlocked, leave the keys in the car. She sits in the car, watches the game. When she gets out, we're going to walk out of the field with our son after the game. She locks the car. She comes back, honey, throw me the keys. I don't have the keys. Uh-oh, I locked the car. Why did you lock the car? Because we went on the field. We're 50 feet from the car, honey. We're in the middle of nowhere. Who was going to jump in our car? Thank God. We've got an extra key. <laughs> Listen, Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God. Cynthia, I know you're going to watch this. I love you. <laughs> he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And when you read the rest of that psalm, it's all about protection. Provision and protection. Listen, moms and dads, if you want to if you want to protect and provide for your children, make a secret place and go there. It's in the secret place that provision is, is taken care of. It's in the secret place that protection is designed for us. The secret place is abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Malachi says it this way, that we get it underneath his wing and he rises with healing in his wing secret place. The best way you can protect your children is to have a secret place. You and God. You and God. It's in the secret place you'll receive instruction. He says, I will give you treasures and hidden riches of secret places. Isaiah 45, 3. That you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. Psalm 3120, you shall hide me in the secret place of your presence from the plots of men. Psalm 51, 6. You desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, that's the secret place. In the secret place of the hidden part. You will make me to know wisdom. In the secret place, we get wisdom. 
God began to teach us, He began to instruct us. You go in with your word and you and you and you let God direct you where you're going in the word. Let him speak to you. Just take time to listen. Take time to listen. If you don't hear him speak that day, then in, in, you don't have a day off from righteousness. But okay, you get, you got the day off. Just go enjoy his presence. Just go enjoy him. Do the things the scriptures already tell us to do. Be a witness. Be a light. But if he doesn't give you any specific instructions that day, then just go be a light. But there's going to be times, I promise you, if you will frequent the secret place, God is going to start revealing secrets to you in the secret place. He's going to start revealing wisdom to you in the secret place. He will give you instructions. He will give you treasures. He will give you songs in the night. He will give you plans. He will destine you. He will give you purpose in the secret place. Now you can settle for where you're at right now. You can settle for saying grace over the bill. You can settle for having a prayer on Sunday morning that somebody else prays. You can settle for those things and you know you're born again. And you can settle for that and say, I think I'm just grace here, Lord. It's safer. Uh, I'm comfortable with it. You can stay there and you can be saved, okay? This isn't about salvation this morning. This is about that you want to go to a place where God wants to take you. Where he desires to take you. Where you're not going to get there. You're not even going to know where to go until you spend time in the secret place. That place where you go in and you shut the door on the world. And you take your scripture you take some soft music. You take something. And you don't go in there with your prayer list. Now you may be in the secret place and God might start laying some things to pray for on your heart. But you don't go into the secret place with your prayer list at hand. You go in there just to be with Father. Just go in there. Remember what he said in Matthew 6, 6? Your Father is in the secret place. Your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Go into your father. See what father wants to say. See what he wants to what he wants to tell you. How he wants to instruct you. Just listen to him. And I'm going to tell you something. It can be awkward at times. When I first started learning the practice of listening to father, rather than telling father what I wanted him to do, now you just have to have a little bit of ADD like I do. And it really takes some discipline to go, all right, father. And some worldly thought just comes in. You gotta say, get this thought out of here. Lord, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you. Father, you want me to look at the Psalms? I'll be glad to look at the Psalms. Lord, if you don't want me to look at the Psalms, stop me. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna read some Psalms. And I mean, just His Word will speak if you take the time to listen. His Word can speak to you, and it's the most exciting thing you'll ever experience. Is the first time you know that you know that you know that you heard the voice of God. Nobody helped you. It was just you and God. And I've had young Christians, when I've instructed them about these things, I've had, uh, not young, so not even old, come out just so excited. God spoke to me what he said. Sometimes it's just something very simple. And we just go with those simple things. In the secret place, when you hear the Father... Here's what he'll do with you. He will teach you who you are. What do you do with your children? What did you do with your children when they were young? You take your little, like my brand new little grandson. He doesn't know that his name is Saint Grayson. But we're going to teach him. And one day he's going to be able to say, I am Saint Grayson, one devil. I am four years old. And then we're going to teach him what his address says. I am Zane Grayson Warndale. I live at 126 whatever. My phone number is this. We will teach our children those things. We'll teach them their identity. We will introduce them to their uncles and their aunts. We will introduce them to their grandparents. We will teach them how to identify themselves. And your father, when you go in as a child to your father, he will teach you who your name is. He will teach you who you belong to. He will teach you your address. He will teach you that you are a citizen of the kingdom, not just a citizen of the earth. He will tell you where you live. 
He'll tell you why he purposed you to be born again. He will identify you. And when you become identified, and you know who you are, too many Christians don't know who they are. They don't know who they are because they haven't spent enough time with Father so he can teach them who they are. Jesus said, you were Simon, but from now on you are Peter. The world called you Simon, Bar Jonah, but you are Peter. the secret place that Father begins to teach us who we are and why he called us what our purpose is it's in the secret place that we Jeremiah 29 11 it's not just a verse that we just the one I just quote throw out there I know my plans toward for you plans of hope and plans of the future my thoughts towards you listen yes God said that through the prophet Jeremiah but when you get in the secret place and you hear God say that I know my thoughts towards you. I love to just take my grandchildren and put them up in my lap. And I tell them each one, I was, I was telling my two grandsons because the ladies went and did their thing yesterday. Uh, Grandma and Nana and Amanda and Jake and I had Thomas and Caleb. And just one of them, I just picked them up and put them in my lap. And I said, you know how much GP loves you? I love you. Do you love GP? Yeah, I love GP. Yeah. You know how much I love them? I took them to Toys R Us. <laughs> I never take my kids to Toys R Us when they were little. I didn't have any money to take them to Toys R Us. When we walked into Toys R Us, Caleb runs straight to this toy. I took them in the toy section. <laughs> <laughs> he runs straight to this toy. GB, oh, GB pulls it out. GB, God, GB, will you buy me this? It was $14.99. It's no big deal, but I was thinking more like five bucks. Not cheaper than my wife. I'm thinking like five bucks, but when he looked at me, he said, Cheapy, will you buy me this? How many of you know what I did? And guess what? He set the bar for the other two. Because the other two knew Thomas knows numbers and Jane knows numbers. $15. Can I get something? $15? If we, being evil fathers, being earthly fathers, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more our Father in heaven will give to those who love him and who will ask? See, too often we just want Father to give us everything in his hand. And we don't ever call up in his lap and just say, Father, I didn't come here for anything today. I just came here for you. Amen. Does that make sense? Find a place. That's secret number one. Shut the door. That's secret number two. Listen. Listen. Listen to the voice of the Father. That's secret number three. Secret number four. Obey. 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 Respond to what he says. Worship team, will you come back up here? Please.